Rivendell and the House of Elrod, the last home of the house. You know, I read the books, watched the movies, played some of the games. Have you ever wanted to know a bit more about Rivendell and the history and its foundation, its founding, and its layout and what's going on and so on and so forth? Uh, this is this is a good way to find out. This is a good source book. Uh, this, like I've said before, I like the the MERP, the system, uh, Iron Crown Enterprises uh, writing style. Majority of it, some excellent stuff. And mostly, what I like about it is I could get much more in-depth detail on locations and from the books and now from the movies, although um, as, a, as a purist, I, I watch the movies and I cringe or I, I rant when I see something that goes out of canon or off to the, you know, it's, that didn't happen in the book. It's not in the book. <laughs> That's the way it works, right? I mean, I get it. Peter Jackson did a crack job. He did an awesome job. And he took creative license, as they tend to do, and he had to modernize it to some aspects. You know, I mean, we brought in some character roles that in the books were very played down, uh, women specifically. He, you know, Tolkien wrote in a much different era and age, and it wasn't, uh, you know, by modern standards, the, 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 Tolkien's just, or Peter Jackson's just writing some wrongs or um, bringing it into the, you know, into the modern era. I get it. Um, but then there's some extra stuff he went to, to, you know, The Hobbit. He, didn't, he wanted three movies out of The Hobbit, and so what did he do? He went and he made up stuff so he could get his three movies, you know. And the some stuff you want to go, really, really, what's with the, you know, What's with reg ass uh, rabbit drum sledge? You know, I get. Eh, come on, really? Okay, I'm not going on to that. Jeez, yeah, it looked cool, and yeah, you got a couple, you know, a couple uh, little phrases he got to speak out of it. We've seen a lot more reg ass. His in the books, we barely know this guy. He barely touches on him. So, you know, hey. It is what it is. The House of Elrod, excuse me. Once again, we have our beautiful color maps. Give us our location and set the, set the tone of the area. The guidelines, definitions, abbreviations, converting stats from any major system. Introduction to the general history of Rivendell, the timeline, Second Age 750, founding of the Noble Kingdom, Holland and Eric Ground, Rubik, Glider, El blah, 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 Third Age, blah, blah. Third Age 3021, passing the ring bearers, including Elrond, Glider, El Gandalf, Frodo, and Sam in the Undying Lands, Calus, uh, Karis, Caladan, Calahorn is abandoned, Eladan, and Elahor dealt for a while, and Rivendell would eventually depart over the sea. Last time the house is closed and abandoned. So eventually it closes and goes, you know, reverts to the, the land. Uh, the land around Rivendell, the geography, highlands, troll shaws, the lowlands, rivers, fauna, flora, the inhabitants, elves of Rivendell, dress and appearance, the Nolder, the Tellari, the Cinder, Nander, the Abari. Society, military, religion, section on trolls and the hillmen, dress and appearance, counter religion, language, the military, the Dunedain of Rudur, like it says here. Under chapter 4.4, the Dunedain and Rudder. In addition to the Rangers, many of whom reside in Rivendell, a fair number of Dunedain still make their homes in Radur. That is until the wars with Agmar and the sister states drive them away. By midway through the Third Age, the only two Dunedain left are the Rangers. I think there's a section on that. I've read about. You know the rangers of the north and why they're so important 
in, 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 <clears throat> in brief, it is through their legacy that and their efforts that uh, the, the bloodline of Aragon's family are protected, but also legitimized because uh, there's still this one element of the Honorian military and uh, uh, government still intact in the north. There are handfuls of small homesteads and scatterings of Dunedain, uh, pure-blooded ones who live in the, what's left of the villages like Bree and, and Tharbad and stuff like this in, in, in Long Lake. But uh, for the most part, as a country, Arnor is defunct, it's destroyed. Uh, if Aragon, uh, the Rangers didn't exist, and didn't continue to protect the goodly people of the north, then Aragon would have had an even weaker claim on the throne of Gondor. You know, his blood his blood is one thing, it's another thing to have fled the life of, of the protector and the, uh, the neo-politician. Uh, they don't touch on that in the books and the novels. You don't see the depth of history to the degree that they should with uh, uh, Aragon, so we appreciate exactly why his claim on Gondor is legitimate other than the fact that you can say that my great great ancestor was, right? Just pointing that out. There's a good reason for it. So we go into the stuff for the Dunedain to Rador, the Dunland, the Dunlandings, uh, then we've got Chapter 5, Politics and Power, Elrod, uh, this particular equipment, other, you know, and, and the old boy from the Matrix who plays uh, Elrod in the, in the movies does a crack job of, of representing him, I think, in both his mentor, uh, uh, wise man role, and as his uh, uh, avenging uh, Elvish warrior prince role. And yet, as an individual, Elrod is a very unique person in the stories and the annals of Lord of the Rings. And because he is one of the two half-elves, the original half-elves, uh, who chose to live as an elf, and his brother chose to live as a human, who then founded the, the, the Dunedain ancestors, more or less founded uh, Nirmor, and through them, Gondor and Arnor, and so forth. The, uh, I always watch these guys creep up and down the street in front of the shop where I work and wonder what they're up to. You know? Yeah, sorry, I'm getting off track. Other prominent elves for Findle, uh, he's a elf lord that doesn't get the playtime in the movies that uh, Erwin uh, uh, upset, uh, upstages him because she steals his actual only face time of the book. He's the one that saves John. It's his horse that saves uh, Frodo from the Nazgul uh, at the Fords of Brunin, not Erwin. I'm just saying. That's Peter Jackson's license to bring uh, this stuff into the modern uh, era, right? Nothing wrong with that. Also got the def uh, Eldenan and Elhor, uh, the, the twin sons of Elrod, uh, their equipment. Halvanir is a Sylvian elf, so we get some NPCs and stuff like that. Uh, we get a brief talk about the White Council. There's a picture of some, one of the gatherings of, uh, and their purpose and when they were established. Uh, Rivendell itself, the valley, the layout, you know, yeah, color, color maps. When you see it in the movies and you read about it in the book, the books do a little better job of giving it a feel that uh, it's calling it Elrod's house is it, it's it's more like a a, a village or a town, a fortified uh, uh, manor estate of sorts, because you actually have a population, of, a mixed population that lives here, mostly elves with a scattering of humans, uh, very few humans, and uh, you don't have the city streets and the run out that you, you, you know, you would assume uh, for something of the size. They never go into any any depth as to exactly how big the population is. Uh, we know that the elves fill, it's a small, deep valley, and the whole valley is basically ruled by Elrod, so there's, there's who knows how many are in there. And they don't get outside the boundaries of, of, of uh, Rivendell, so they don't expand, although there's enough of them there that uh, Elrod's able to muster together a small, a small contingent of, uh, of uh, 
warriors, soldiers, to send to uh, help uh, uh, Aragon and the others at uh, Helm's Deep. You know, arguing that a lot of those came from Loth Lauren, the last troop, but, uh, you know, they left out the part in the movies where the Rangers right for the Gray Company right south that joined Aragon and uh, the, 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 the sons of uh, Elrod right with them and uh, you know it's a pity because you lose something I think. Uh, the main hall the direction of the, the building itself we got a, uh, an entry for, for Bilbo for during the time that he's there uh, Arwen of course who is in the books, a much wider or much bigger character. And the movies do a better job of establishing just how important she is and why. Now, not just to Aragon, but to the uh, the storyline and to what would take place after the world, the War of the Ring. Anyway, uh, the forges, the forge complex, uh, where the swords re re uh, reforge the Western Hall, where they talk about all the stories and telling. You know, we got our or breakdown of the building itself, the main house. And there are several pages of this. Like I said, I've, I've borrowed these numerous times as uh, sub, you know, place settings for other things. I use this, I think, on several occasions as a palace for uh, campaigns set in the that are, you know, other game systems that I've ran in Dungeons and Dragons because it's just convenient to do so. Uh, each Elvish city has got its unique story and unique uh, style. That's the one significant difference in Merp and Lord of the Rings base material as opposed to things like uh, your rest, your, your mainline uh, 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 FRGs, uh, uh, fantasy role-playing games. The elves have a different character, a different vibe in, in Lord of the Rings. Uh, the dwarves are pretty much dwarves from any any given game system. They're they're quite, other than their history, you know, their beliefs, uh, their their play, their their appearance, their uh, attitudes are all pretty consistent. Uh, the elves, on the other hand, quite different. And I think it's because of the development, they, the, 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 the creation system for Lord of the Rings. And I thought it was interesting that, this is just me as a personal opinion, that uh, the diversion of the elvish uh, character or mindset from this stuff to the, how it's portrayed in Forgotten Realms or uh, Dragonlance or a number of other game systems. The We have to have these debates and probably will have them many more to come and many other people will debate this to the end of time long after you and me and uh, the others here are gone and uh, we may never get a solid straight agreement or answer out of any of this stuff. Uh, there's a plenty of argument that says most of our modern fantasy role-playing game systems owe uh, enough, if nothing else, but an homage to J.R. Tolkien's work. Uh, but I think it goes deeper than that. It's because of his, his books that most of the creators and game uh, designers of our era that created these things, and I mean some of us older guys era, not you younger folks, no offense to you there, friends, uh, I'm just saying, you know, you guys might have the much tinier, small cell phones than we did when we first we come up with them, but us codgers are the ones who come up with the concept, and we saw this stuff on TV and said, I want that, and we made it happen. So the same thing, some of these guys wrote, read these fantasy settings, uh, Conan the Barbarian and, and Lord of the Rings, and uh, said, I would like to play that. I want to be there, and how do I do it? And somebody come up with some base concepts, and then the other people grabbed it and ran, expanded on it. Well, J.R. Tolkien is the grandfather, of the corner, one of the key cornerstones of this genre, and love it, like it, or debate it all you want. That's my belief on it. And somehow or another, to make 
the stuff uh, different enough so they weren't plagiarizing. The other creators had to divert. So we looked at things like the elves and their philosophy and mindset and how they approach, and they're just distinctly different. You look at the elves from uh, the Dragonlance uh, stuff, and they have a different mindset than the ones from Forgotten Realms and, and Dungeons and & Dragons. And although Dragonlance is Dungeons & Dragons, or it was, you know, just a different world setting. Hmm. There you go. My opinion, my two cents worth on that. Blog it, hate it, love it. It is what it is. It's all the next.